Hello, I'm Zephyr One. I'm going to try to show you guys, uh, share with you, I mean not show you, but share with you some of my ways that I've learned of growing uh, cannabis, an expensive way of growing cannabis. My first thing that I've learned uh, is a few things you might need, might want to get. Number one, you want to get yourself some type of power surge protector. That way if your stuff shorts out, you, it would cut off on its own. You want to get, try to get a good one. This is not the one I'm using. This, uh, this is the aftermarket one. I don't use them, but you want to get something like this. Also, you want to try to get yourself some pH down because the pH in the water is very, very important. If the pH is not right in the water, it will stunt the growth of your plants and your plants won't grow. Believe me, I tried. I was growing plants for over eight months and it, you only got to be like maybe a foot tall best. Okay, so I learned that you need a pH down. Also, pH down tester so you don't know when the pH is too high or too low this this here test is a very easy simple way to test the pH it only costs like seven bucks you don't need nothing fancy no digital no fancy digital setup you can just this is a seven buck setup and last I've had this for over a year now that's how, how long it lasts and it's bought a pH down I had for over a year too so that's how much you use okay another thing that, that you might want to get depending on if you're going to be using clones or seeds, if you're going to use seeds, you want to get something like these. These are seed starters. You want to always make sure you wash your hands before you deal with the seeds because seeds are kind of temperamental. If you smoke, nicotine will, will most definitely ruin the seeds. But there's all kinds of other things that are on your skin that might ruin the seeds too. So just to be careful, you want to wash your hands before you put the seeds in here. You just put them in here, you know, then you stick them in something like, something like this. Put a little bit of water in there. Just enough to like, you know, a little level of water in there. You want to make sure you like soak these things pretty good before you put the seeds in there. Then you just put them in, in a dark like like drawer or something where it's going to be dark at. And just leave them in there. And uh, when you look again, they're going to be popping out there to a little, little, little spuds going to pop out there. And you let a little spuds go a little bit until you see the roots to the bottom of the, of the little cubicles here. When you see the roots to the bottom here, then you want to put them in dirt. Okay, it's a pretty simple process. Also, you want to try to get some kind of measuring apparatus. Something like this, you know. So later, later doing your grossing, you might want to add some chemicals. I don't, I don't really use chemicals in my when I grow, so I want to be able to measure the chemicals exactly right. It's a very temporal thing. When you start using chemicals, is how much to add. That's a really easy way to, to kill the plant or slow the plant's growth down or shock the plant. Plants are temperamental to shock. Another good thing I found to get is it's really kind of difficult to tell when the water, when the water the plant. So I bought one of these things here. I use this thing pretty religiously <laughs> and it never fails. I don't water the plant to, it, to this thing here that says it needs water and I've been using this, this particular one here for over a year and these here cost like I don't know like 10 bucks probably. It's pretty cheap too. So anyway, so really pretty cheap. Another thing I suggest too is I suggest that you uh, keep your water in something. I made all my water and, and, and measure the pH down. I keep it all in this big old container right here. Therefore it's all the water is the same temperature when, it, when I get the when I get ready to use it and I have a pump in there and I actually pump my water out to my plants but you don't have to pump it you can use this you can scoop it but anyway that's a, it's a new trash can full of water with peach down and as you can see my plants these are my new batch of plants I just started the ones back there are auto flowers these are uh, Afghani and Kush auto flowers. They'll, they will fully grow in 60 days. You don't even have to do anything to these. There's no, you don't have to change the light or anything for those type of plants. So if you have problems with the seeds and bought auto, auto flowers, they grow up hella fast and you don't have to do anything special to them. You don't even have to even change the light. Just leave the light the same. It does all everything all on its own. And then in this corner here, same closet, mind you, I have some plants starting from seeds. As you can see one of my kind of like planted prematurely <laughs> and then this one here and these these plants are been in here for uh these are almost about a week's worth of growth already and i'm using a led light 120 watt led panel for that one and also other led lights and i'm using a cfl light i kind of like add the cfls off and on throughout the growing stage and as you see i have this this high output 400 watt uh, hd right here uh, uh hps sps light Okay, now here comes the other question. People had say, which is better, LED or the H, H, uh, HPS lights? I, I didn't put out lights. But I'll tell you, you're going to get better buds with this light right here. This light right here will put out better buds, okay? But however, 
that light right here creates quite a bit more heat and burns a bit more energy. The LED light, which is my 120s, like over here, these ones here, they don't burn much energy, but you're not going to get very big buds out of those. And as you can see, by the dimension about light and how much light's putting out, you can't grow many plants with that light. So that's another problem. And plus, the light's kind of costly. This here light here is a 120 watt, didn't cost much. But in order for the, to really actually get some big buds out of the plants, you got to have a pretty big and pretty bright LED light. Well, unfortunately, when you get into more brighter lights and the bigger lights of the LEDs, they cost quite a bit, which makes it not uh, cost efficient for growing plants because you're only going to get so much out of the plants, you know. And that's a good benefit of these big bright lights here. The big bright light shines on all the plants, you know, so you're going to get big buds, which I've been getting some pretty big buds. If you look at some of my past videos, you will see the buds are pretty big and, and pretty good buds. So that's the that's difference. So like if you say, people say, what's better, LED, LEDs or, 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 uh, or these high energy lights? Well, if you can get them, if you got the money to afford a, a, a nice LED light, then, you know, that's, that's good. It's going to be good, better on your energy consumption. But the problem is not going to make the big, tight, dense buds. So it depends on what kind of bud do you want. Do you want the bud to be big? Do you want it to be small? And if you want to go skimping your energy and then get an LED light. The LED lights cost a lot. And they don't put out big buds, but yet you you get by on saving the money wise, you know, for energy and all that stuff. But I kind of like using them both together. They seem to do better, best when you add them both together. Another good way of, of saving the energy is if you just use the LED lights, LEDs just for the vegging uh, process. The LEDs they 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 veg the plant better than than the high energy output lights. Okay, so that's a big benefit too. So anyway, guys, that's what I have today. So I hope you guys enjoy my new growing stage. Happy growing from Zephyr One. Bye.